Hi there, I'm Isana Ali Shaw, and you are watching me on YouTube and Facebook Live, and also you are also watching me on LinkedIn. It's my uh, second time on LinkedIn Live, live LinkedIn. And today we are going to talk about how to make a relationship work and the inner work in the relationship. And we are going to have a roundtable discussion. And how to make a relationship work. Last week, we, we had a very detailed discussion on the relationship advice, that how can you build a, a relationship by, by doing certain things like, uh, like setting up, having the same values and goals when you have the, when both partners and spouse and couples are on the same page in terms of values, in terms of goals, then they can, uh, then they can move towards, then they can establish a strong and longer relationship. And there, there were many other suggestions and we, it, it, it led us to the point where, uh, uh, to the point where we start to discuss how, what is the inner work in the relationship that people should keep in mind and people should do. And how to make a relationship work, in my view, that the goals and objectives should be clear. For instance, one partner want, wants, to have, uh, uh, wants to have family and children, and the other partner doesn't. Then in that case, the relationship, the, the probability of, of uh, having a, a long-term relationship is very low because the goals are not aligned. If you want, uh, when it comes to, to, to the long-term relationship, both partners, the, the goals and objectives of both partners should be aligned. And conflicts are bound to happen. When you have to, there's no such thing as perfect. There's going to be disagreement, there's going to be conflict. Now the question is, how are you going to handle it? And uh, B, you have to fill your relationship with affectionate. It's not how, it's not what you fight, it's how you fight that matters. And there are many other ways to do so. And we are going to dive a much deeper into the, into this, uh, this discussion of relationship and the inner work, inner work in the relationship that the couples, partners, spouse, and uh, whether they are new or old, they should do. And to discuss this topic, my guests are Melissa Amy. Mm -hmm. He is a psychologist, and he has joined us from New York, USA. And and my other guest is is Paul. He has joined us from mm -hmm. Iceland. How are you guys? Good. How are you? How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's morning here, and uh, it's cl the weather is cloudy. I hope we are going to have a, a good rain. And the temperature here gets very hard. It was very hard uh, for the past few days, and rain would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how to make a relationship work and the inner work in the relationship. And uh, last week, we ended uh, our discussion on the point of inner work in the how would you overview? What is the overview uh, of of the inner work in the relationship, Melissa? From you want me to start from last week or start fresh? You want me to piggyback uh, off of the a little overview. Then we uh, then we start questioning and go dive um, deeper into it. Uh, step the point. We discuss those points uh, step by step later on. But uh, I want you to start with overview. Okay. Well, we went over from, for, I, gave a, I gave an assignment for people who, who watched this video from last, uh, last Sunday when, when uh, we talked that I wanted people to start paying attention to their thoughts. And I'm going to connect it to relationships. But um, what I asked people to do was to um, pay attention to observe their thoughts. So ob observing, you know, just paying attention because a lot of times people are walking around and I, I actually believe it even happens in the research community 
that um, I'm not sure if everybody's doing their inner work. And um, it, it, it's easier for me, and I think it, became, it was more natural because I was a former therapist. Um, so I, I was used to practicing this, and then as I got more knowledge, I expanded it. So what I asked people to do was to pay attention to their thoughts, um, just to observe them, just to observe them. Um, you know, that was one stage. If people were already doing that, then I asked them to um, notice you know, what are, what are your thoughts saying to you? What are your thoughts saying to you? Pay attention, you know, just observe, you know, just, you're not even judging it. You're just, you're just noticing it. Like, like the way even you might notice a rainbow or you might notice, you know, someone's red shirt. I wanted you to start noticing your thoughts because again, I don't believe most people do. So if you if you uh, don't Melissa, know, I'm sorry. Uh, Melissa, if you remember uh, yesterday, uh, I was having, uh, we were having the same discussion and you were also there that noticing and observing your thoughts about mental health, isn't it the same case here? Yes. Yes, you're, yes. It's, you're noticing your thoughts. And I also want people to consider that too in a relationship. Like how is your dialogue back and forth? But you have to first be able to notice it in yourself. If you don't notice it in yourself, you're not going to see it patterns in anybody else. The patterns start with you. So if, if you notice those patterns, you notice those thoughts, you might be noticing patterns in relationships. Maybe, you, maybe you've had a number of relationships that are, you end up with a cheater each time, or you end up with somebody who's verbally abusive, or you, know, you can end up with many things. But first it starts with you, and that's why I feel like a lot of what we talked about last week was roots, you know, that you need yes. to work, the foundation has to be solid. So the foundation starts with you, and, the, and that first step, to get to that relationship is to notice what your thoughts are. Yes, so it's like you have to know what you want in the relationship. You should be clear about it. For instance, you want to have a family, you want to have a children, you want to go somewhere, you want to live on the beach, you want to live in the city. All of these little things, they matter a lot in the relationship, right? Yes. And Paul, any comments on it? I hear only about 250 comments. Mm -hmm. okay. the, last seven, the, 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 last seven, uh, the last seven days, the last mm -hmm. week if, of my life has been like incredible. I've been doing like four jigsaws separately, talking about inner work. Nobody told me how inner work actually is. And I discovered it about a week ago. And it's about having f like four jigsaw puzzles and you're working, going between them. And suddenly one day, morning, afternoon, it all seems to connect. Yes. All, yes. You know, you, you're connecting to this person that's talking about a totally different thing and you you don't see this and you're you're actually thinking i'm all over the place but there's a reason for it and when you see the four jigsaw puzzles actually fit together and you're getting people to talk to each other and you're actually like the mediator and th there is actually I'm not joking here, and I, I never joke about any like anything about businesses or anything like that because I have I until now I had no knowledge of anything. Of, I could never discuss anything about business and how it works. Certainly, I'm now mm. at, at the threshold of a business idea, mm. and I've got about three different people talking to me and together about the same thing. So those three puzzles, and I'm being the fourth puzzle here. Right. And I believe me, I am a puzzle. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. Certainly it's, it's, it's coming together. And there is, there is actually a, a sense in it. it it's, it's adding up. I don't know how it's it's going to mm -hmm. go, but I have this very strong feeling that all these jigsaws that I thought I was, oh, oh, I have to concentrate on one thing. No, of mm -hmm. course not. 
concentrate on one thing. Right. I'm not I'm not five. I'm a grown up man. I can multitask. I was actually surprised that I made this thing work. And now I am connected with three people that I never thought would ever have any interest in talking to each other. And we're making a great, I don't know, progress. We have an idea about well, what we want to do together. We want to get together and form a business. Exciting. It, it's so exciting. And I, of all people, what am, what am I doing? What do I think that I'm doing? I'm not really doing anything except inner work. I'm being led. I've, been, I've said this before. I'm being protected. That's obvious. But I'm actually doing something now, and I'm getting people together. So there Can was you... a reason for this pain that I went through last summer. Pal, can you explain to people when you said you did your inner work? Can you maybe give because I because I remember I I used to read Eckhart Tolle and Gary Zukov, Seat of the Soul, you know, back in my twenties. And I never when they said inner work, I really never. I, I I knew I was on the path, but I knew I it 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 wasn't familiar to me what they were saying. I, I didn't feel like I I got to the point where they were, and now I do. So uh -huh. um, when you say uh, inner work, can you explain to people maybe watching what you did that was differently that led you to have these opportunities? In a, in a very short term, I would say keep all the gates open. Mm -hmm. Open up all the doors, open up all the windows, let the breeze in. Don't close any windows. Yes. Keep everything open your mind open and just be honest, be open. And, and actually it's so weird. It, I can't really explain it, but when you're open towards people and different people talking about different things, and then certainly, Oh, is there a possibility that, how is it to start a massage parlor in Morocco? You know, and it, it started with that. And I think it was, I, 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 there, there's a comment here. Uh, it reminds me of also, I also noticed, uh, I don't know what happened, but I realized the pattern. Uh, I, I had the something that uh, I was, uh, you are just some, sometimes you are attracted to a certain people, and I mm -hmm. realized it a while ago that uh, I was attracted to someone. Then it just made me think that uh, it, this is going to happen the same way because it has happened twice. I was attracted to those people. It's the third time I'm also attracted to, to the same person in the same condition. So I just simply step back. Uh, after realizing you're developing the pattern, what should be the next step, Melissa? Developing the well, I would I would say when Pal was speaking, I don't think it just it's not just about inner work. He he got to the level where he got to the creative piece. He he got to the level where he he was open when he said open. He allowed his, he, he did enough, he had enough quiet time with himself and people can use music or, you know, I use poetry or whatever. They could be in nature and you're using your time to develop your creativity or, and with that creativity, you, you're using imagination. So you're open to all different possibilities. And then you're also working on your confidence. So you feel confident enough to, to take that step. When the universe gives you a chance or gives you an option, you take it, you know? So mm. that's what I think. If we broke it down, he did do the work. I, I just, uh, I don't think he realized all the steps he, he took to get to the place where he is now. To have now he's seeing that what he's thinking about, he's manifesting. So that's in the same, you apply that to a relationship too. Yeah, yes. uh, because every relationship is different. Sometimes those points, uh, those Perhaps work for somebody, and uh, some part, uh, some person has to. Some people have to uh, follow many steps, and the other person yes. has to 
take few steps. It depends upon the observation and how keen a person is uh, to his thoughts, to his or her thoughts. Yes. So, uh, after the next step is finding the peace. Isn't it right? Finding peace and uh, peace in yourself. Sometimes, yourself? yes. Sometimes. Peace in yourself. Uh, Sometimes it, that causes when you're doing inner work and you're realizing, like now you're thinking, you're using your imagination, you're open to all different possibilities, you're, you're doing your inner work, and now you realize, well, maybe some things need to change in my life. So that might be um, the job, it might be, you know, your, your, your lifestyle, the way you, you treat your body, like everything could be different. You know, I think, I think people ignore, like they used to with the, it's like a midlife crisis, but it's not just superficial, you know, like people, we hear about the story about people having midlife crises, but, um, I guess what I would like to say is that you you could that could look at that it could look that way but you're really doing inner work and you want to change your environment you're not happy and who's going to change it but you you have to change it you know yeah. yes yes yeah. and and, Nobody and, else. and the other thing is when you see the pattern that this has been happening then acceptance is not easy right. and you have to accept the reality as it is you don't have to justify it Paul? I, there is a hindrance. I am actually mm -hmm. starting off on September 6th. I'm flying to Spain. As mm -hmm. I promised my old time friend and ex-lover that he used to be living in Spain since 2014. He wanted me to come and try to live there. He offered me to um, register as a permanent residence in his flat while I was getting settled. Now, I have still to sell my flat, so this is technically a visit. The thing is, uh, here is another thing, and this is one of the reasons why I think I'm, I'm living a movie here. This is virtually, and I, I'm not joking, mm. because I certainly get a message about a week ago. Uh, there's an Icelandic guy Alexander, he lives with a Spanish guy. About I, I knew, I knew he, he lived somewhere in Spain and he was a Facebook friend and we were sort of like anti-restrictions about COVID, sort of that sort of bound us together. And then he said, I hear you're going to land in Madrid, mm -hmm. Barajas, on September 6th. And I said, yes. And I'm sort of surprised. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to move there. Well, uh, my boyfriend Sorry. and I, we have decided we, we only live about three hours away from Madrid, Barajas, and we would be very keen on picking you up at the airport and driving you to Sevilla yeah. in Spain. Now, that's a five-hour drive. Wow. That's and so cool. I, and I said, thank you. Are you sure up to it? It's a, you know, I land at 10 past eight in the evening. I'll get out of the, the building at half past nine, probably. And it's a, it's a, the whole night drive and we might have to stop somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. That's just the exciting part. And then, Oh, thank you. And I, I just, I opened up for it. You see, I could have said, well, no, we can't have that or blah, 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 you yeah. know, but yeah. yes, I just, yeah, why not? Thank you so much. Yeah. And I was just, that, I was grateful. And I embraced it. And then the following day, I phoned my friend in Sevilla that I'd known since we were in theology. And I said, Flossie, Flossie it, did you ask an Alexander fellow to, to contact me and, and offer to pick me up at the airport? No. Who's Alexander? Oh, he's hmm. also your Facebook friend. Did you? Is that? Is this sort of a scheme of yours to get me to Sevilla to have them pick me up and drive me to Sevilla? No, I never did that. Do you see how this is going? <laughs> it is. I mean, yeah. I'm meeting people that I never <laughs> planned on meeting, and that and this is just Spain. I'm going to stay Damn. there for ten days. Then I'm going to a loop and and and. <laughs> Can't. Take off, take off to Morocco. To you are living a movie. 
I am moving. This is just a visit. <laughs> but then I'll, yes. I'll be back. You know, I'll be back. And uh, but um, but this trip for a long time, I had only plans to go to Morocco. But then it, but yes. now I'm first going to Spain because I probably need to go there because I've never been there before. So obviously I have to open that door as well. You see. Right. There's a there's a pattern in this. And I, even if mm. I don't un completely understand it, mm. I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to keep I... the windows open, the doors open, and I'm going to relax and embrace it. Mm -hmm. I think the pattern is that you are attracted towards a, a excitement. Yes. Uh, is it is it the same? I. I had no, and uh, to be offered by a stranger to be driven from Madrid to Sevilla, no, that's not the top of my list, actually. And the, the mere fact mm -hmm. that he's gay and live living with a, a Spanish guy is mm -hmm. not is not a thing that makes me tick, you know. Mm -hmm. But. He off he he contacted me and offered me to do this, and I found it as I was in that place where I saw it as a beautiful gesture. Yes, he's Icelandic. He's living in a foreign country with a foreigner. Chances are he just wants to hook up with a, a, an Icelandic guy to be able to speak Icelandic for right. the simple reason of yeah. that. And then. And then we can all meet up in Sevilla when Flossie wakes ah. up in the wee hours of the morning when we've been driving around to wait wait for his highness ah. to wake up. And then we will hook up and go somewhere to my to my pens, pens, pension, pensionate, pensionate, what do you call it? A pensionate in, um, in Sevilla, which is around the corner where Flossie lives. So we're all going to be a happy family there. For some reason. Okay. So great. Wait, can wait, you I want to say something real quick. You have to you have to go live when you're in Sevilla. You're getting the Mary I, Mary Louisa Park, you have to every oh my god, I haven't seen it in so long. Okay. I know, okay. I know. This oh, I know, we're off topic. And this is going to okay. no, it's it's right on topic <laughs> because it's this is just out of I'm going with the flow virtually. Yeah. Totally. I have no I'm control. I'm happy for you. Me too. I'm happy I, for you too. I have no control of this. I don't know who's and, writing the script, to be honest. This uh, is a right. okay, you, you, you are. You are. <laughs> you are. You are. Yes. But I'm in no control yeah, just, of it. I'm in no yes, control. You are, you, are, you are following the energy, the whatever life is that flowing. Is true. You are just flowing with the. With I the am open. Opening yes. the windows. I'm yes. opening the yes. windows. That's I all think, I needed to do. Yeah. As a, we started our discussion first with the inner voice, then you have to see the pattern, then accept the reality. As Paul said, move with the flow. And the next point I, I would say here is, uh, let me, here is to, uh, you have to make reasonable compromises in life when it comes to it, because nothing is perfect. Uh, you ha it, it comes to a point that, as you know, uh, you are aware of the fact that nothing is perfect in life. You have some flaws in your personality, and your partner also has flaws. If you can uh, could find a middle ground, then you have to adjust on it. Isn't it right, Melissa? Um, I think that depends on the situation and what, what you're compromising on. So I think that's a very uh, broad um, a broad statement. So to me, I would need more of the particulars on, you know, what exactly, you know, you're because some things you're not going to compromise on. And that goes back to the roots. So, yeah, you should know that ahead of time, what you're willing to compromise on and what you're not willing to compromise on. And also I want to go back to what Paul was saying about pieces of a puzzle. Um, you're working towards your alignment and your alignment is your happiness, your happiness. And also how, what are you going to give back to the world? Cause I don't think people also do not look on when they're doing their inner, you're doing your inner work, but you're also at the same, you know, as, as you get more involved with your inner work, you're also looking out in the world as within, so without. 
So you also, your alignment is what you want for yourself. What, what, what dreams do you have for yourself? Um, this is your life and, and what would make you happy in your life? What would you be happy doing? You know, you, those, are, those are things you're asking yourself. Where, where would I be? What do I want to be doing? You know, how can I contribute to the world? And, and, and you know, in, in what way? You know, what way am I going to use my special gift and, and help the world? But so then mm-hmm. you're looking around you and that relationship that relationship should be something that is a complement to what is in your alignment. So mm-hmm. is, you know, that's, that's a foundation. So if you have that, yes, there's, there's areas you might compromise on, you know, mm-hmm. um, in different yeah. areas. Yes. Where you live, yeah. maybe you may compromise, you know, jobs, you know, different things. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone's fulfilling their, reasonable. what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reasonable. But that, but, but, yeah. but there's no, it's not a cookie cutter. It, it really depends. Yeah. What's, what's reasonable to one person. Way might not be yeah, reasonable to another person. Yes. And uh, uh, we're talking about the goals. And goals are also important. They should complement each other. As long as they're complementing each other, they are aligning with each other. For instance, one person has a family, wants to have children, and other person, other partner also wants to have children. So on this point, if they are agree uh, on this thing, this is the main standard, and this is the main criteria in the relationship, then uh, then it's good. Then you can compromise on small things, like where are you going to work or where are, are you going to stay? And it's foundation. And it goes back to what your values are, what your values are. Totally. Um, and I think it depends on your level of consciousness because there are people who've been married for 30 years and, and um, none of, both of them haven't evolved. Like both of them haven't done inner work, they or maybe some superficial, um, and also so they kind of stayed stagnant. So their relationship was fine because they were both stagnant. If one goes up, you know, and really starts doing inner work, they're not going to be with. They don't want to be with someone who's not done the inner work because mm-hmm. it's not fair. You know, like mm-hmm. it's not not even fair. It's, you're not getting uh, anything back. You know, you're mm-hmm. not because you're just not at that level. You're not that frequency. So you're going to notice that. And I think a lot of people who um, are, are becoming, get, just getting more information and ch- we, we call it the great awakening, whatever. I don't care what the term is for it, but we know people are just becoming more multidimensional. They're, they're in, more in touch with, um, they, you know, they're more in touch with what's going on and uh, they're questioning things. So if you have somebody, and this is happening a lot in relationships with one person who's questioning everything and one person who's stuck you know, we're going to go back to normal, you know, the new, you know, we're going to go back to normal. Everything's going to know, like, you know, so that that's causing stress and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. You can't, mm-hmm. you, your goal is eventually that you want peace in your home, but it takes, mm-hmm. sometimes it takes chaos to get it that way, you know, or else mm-hmm. if you don't, if you don't challenge it, nothing's going to yeah. change. Yeah. It requires, I think, brutal honesty with each other. Right. And with you yourself first. Honest. Yeah. First of all, you have to be honest with yourself. And accept whatever your mistakes are, and do not defend yourself. When you are will, when both partners are willing to accept their mistakes, and they are honest with each other, and they are going to, they want to talk to you. Then, then there is a hope there. Paul, I have to admit, when we uh-huh. talk about. Admitting our mistakes. I'm proud of my mistakes. I needed to make the mistakes because, A, they were my mistakes. I did them. Number two, at least, I mean, I I find it difficult to call anything that is part of a puzzle that makes a beautiful picture a mistake in itself. It, it's it's um, a step that you. We, we can we like Melissa says we can call it all sorts of names and phrases and use all sorts of combinations to get it through. But the ro- the road is paved with rocks and rubbles, and we don't really see the point in all this. But there is a point. We are. This is a journey, and there are many stops on the way and there will be people left on each platform and that is to me for for the the last week for instance 
I stopped grieving that Mario is no longer part of my life. He doesn't fit in. I'm, and I'm not even sorry to say it. This is just a fact. I, I feel for him, I care for him, I wish him all the best, but he's in a total, he's in a, he was like, he's like four stations away, you know. He was left way back there. And, and I'm moving on with my life. I'm hoping he's moving on with his. I hope he won't stay in his misery forever, but it's not my worry. It's his, it's his life. He needs to figure it out. I can't help him. I just can't. And I'm not even feeling, I mean, two weeks ago, I felt so sorry not being able to help him. Now I don't feel sorry at all. Okay. And mistakes. Yeah. Did I spend two years with this guy? Was that a mistake? No. No. It you was learned. the right thing at the time. It was the wrong. Right. I, I had to face certain things about my myself through him. In a way, he mirrored me, my yes. weaknesses. And I, I, I yes, I, I tried to, of course, we tried to justify, you know, how we behave and how I was codependent on his inability to um, evolve. I mean, I oh, he'll get there. You know, I made all sorts of, mix, you know, excuses for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I let go of it, you know. So if I hadn't gone into this relationship, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be where You're I am ever. today. So yeah. calling it a mistake, mm, it wasn't. It's a way of it ended. It ended for a reason. It took a few months like you i mean all my all my relationship they take a few months to die and then they actually mm -hmm. i mean they lose consciousness and then they're on the respirator and then there's a flat line and then they're officially dead you know that's how my relationships die you know and i'm the last one to give up on him i wanted to keep on going you know but uh, even I face the facts and just let go of it. And it's so, it's so relieving. Yes. And accepting the mistakes and you learn from it. Yes. The most important part about mistakes, as long as you learn something out of it. And calling mistake relationship a mistake. And, and I think it's also a way of avoiding it, avo avoiding the reality. And uh, uh, Melissa, what do you think about sharing little things? How important it is in in building and rebuilding your relationship, whether it's a big news or sh small news, big things or small things. You have to just share everything with your partner. Well, the, well, that is when you you know it is a, it is a process. You know, none of us are a hundred percent there. None of us are. None of us. So um, I think if you have a conscious you know, if you're a conscious couple, if something is bothering, you feel safe to say it, but you're not saying it in a way that's uh, vindictive. You're just saying, well, this is how I feel, or I'm checking in. Um, I notice you've been a little distant, but you know right away, because if you're conscious, you know that, you know, you know that you're disconnected from your partner at the time. You know that you can feel it. Oh, so yeah. it's more of a feeling thing too. And it, so you should, that's why you need to do your inner work because you should be aware of it um, when you, you should be aware of it first in yourself or you're not going to be able to do it with somebody else. And you also have to, you have to be okay to notice or point out if you see patterns that are unhealthy, because if you don't, people ignore them, they ignore them because they're in the dating high thing. They're ignoring patterns mm -hmm. and you have to, you have to, you know, call that out. You have to call it out, you know, in a respectful way, but you, you know, telling the person I I'm paying attention to that. You know, and in your dating process should not be a rush. It should not be a rush. Again, be concerned to anybody who's falling head over heels with you in a day. You know, they should, they, they need to get to know you because they only saw one part of you. And you, you're most, and I can guarantee you, you saw only one part of that person. Okay. So, so you need to take your time, do your due diligence. You know, as you, I consider the same thing with research, you're doing it. Um, and I'm not saying that you're stalking and doing a whole detailed um, 
research on the person's background, but you are paying attention. You know, you're paying attention to patterns um, because a lot of people, a lot of people recycle the same pattern. I'm sorry. What is relevant to you? You should, you should know you have a right to know. Yes. You know, you do have a right. And you, you know, I do think, yes, if you're sharing a bed with somebody, you have a right to know if they have a criminal background, you have a right to know, like, do they have patterns, but, but, but that's why you shouldn't rush it. That's why you shouldn't rush it. You should take, take your time. Um, because normally, if, and especially if you're doing your inner work and you're intuitive, you're going to see some signs, you know, mm. you're going to see good. And I'm not saying you're looking out for terrible things. That's not, no. you know, but you're looking out for both. You know, you're looking out for both. You're being realistic. Yes. And when you do the inner work and you are paying attention and you are observing the pattern and it, it leads us to another point is intuition. Uh, yes. You get a feeling whether it's a good thing or bad thing. And you have right. to follow your intu- in- intuition and your instinct. Paul, how uh, important this is, is this? Yeah, this is yes. straight to, I mean, my reality has been that I have been in, in long-term relationship with closeted guys. Right. And when I realized after two or three months with Mario that I was never going to meet his family. He didn't want them to know about me. I was yet an, I was sharing a bed with an, yet another closet case. And it was summer. We were in love. I mean, I ignored the signs. I Like Elaine Scarpatos pointed out to me so delicately. I mean, Yes, it was difficult for me to read it, but she said a red flag. But and, and the red flags, we tend to, like you say, Melissa, we tend to ignore the red flags right. when we are falling in love and, and building something. We don't know still yet what it is, but we're really in love with that person. And we, when you say observe and check on everything, I, I do get what you mean because, yes, you should keep a straight head, but the tendency is to give it time, you know. Yes, but he'll come around. He'll see how ridiculous yeah. it is. He will see that this is not going anywhere if he keeps hiding this. That's, that has always been my take on this. But those changes do not happen. They don't. And that's the sad part. I know it now. Two years ago, I hoped it wasn't like that. Now I know. Things will not change. You can give it six months. You can give it six years. If that person is hiding you as the dirt on his collar, then nothing's going to change. And that, it took me a long time to come to terms with that and rebuild my own self-esteem after that because I went through all the uh, self-hatred and, you know, the, um, I, 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 you know, I, it, it's a blow to your ego to be something that he doesn't want his family to know that I exist, you know. It, you yeah. don't get used to that. You don't. Yeah. so you have to face it at some point and the right and 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 slowly and then of course this my feeling for him started to die it probably started to die in february march i mean he he did make an effort he brought me flowers on my birthday in february he really made an effort but something inside of me was dying but again i yeah, he didn't he want didn't. to lose me, but he did. But then he was quarreling with his family in Italy in March. Yeah. And then he blamed me because I didn't understand his situation. He was caught between me and his family. So I was part of his problem. Yeah. And then that at that point, I said, sorry, I'm not the problem here. This, yeah. is, totally your, this is totally your problem. You work yeah. it out. This is not me. I'm sorry. And that's when things got ugly because he wanted me to to 
convince him that, you know, I was the one that didn't understand things. I was the reason why he wasn't feeling good about being hiding everything from his family. But I didn't, I didn't mm. catch the ball, if you like. And that is a lesson, I want to just jump in for a second. That's a lesson that you learned, but now you know what you expect in your next relationship. So it's actually, I call it a lesson or a teacher. A lesson's a teacher. So you, he was your teacher. And he was. You know, it, 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 people always think when it comes to, you know, breakups or divorce that there's a good and bad. There's not always a good and bad guy well, or a bad and bad guy. In your situation, bad and bad guy. Um, so you, it just, the puzzle pieces were no longer fitting. You, you grew mm -hmm. as much as you were going to grow together and mm -hmm. you decided that you, what you needed more. And when yeah. he left, when he left, I said to you, you're worried about him. You're worried about him. And I'm like, why don't you take the time and think to yourself, do I really want him back? What was so good about this? Do a list, you know, in your mind, really use this time to think about really, whether you really want to be with him. Are you happy? What about how you feel? You're worried about how he is because we get stuck in an abandonment place, mm -hmm. but you haven't took the time. And I said, also work on your creativity and start working on yourself and develop. And you have, I mean, you've made some, you, and it's not, it hasn't even been a long period of time. And you can see yeah. you're, you're, you're transforming. We see it. Yeah. I see it as your friend. I see it. Yeah. yeah. I feel and it now. People, yeah. I, I feel yeah. it now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the most important thing that you believe it. That you, because yeah, then yeah. it shows is that makes you more attractive to other people mm. that yes. you believe in yourself. And like mm. Asan said, I, I seem to attract certain people, and there mm. there is a pattern in this, and there is a purpose. I believe so, and yeah. and and it, it all comes together into something that is still a mystery to me. Right. But I'm going to keep the windows and the doors open. I have nothing to lose and I have nothing to fear at all. Exactly. Yeah, accepting the reality. And, and yeah. next point is, next point I would like to discuss is, it, it, after we have discussed sharing things and the next point is, is you have to take care of your own needs. You don't have to just get into the relationship right. to, or, Ex, uh, expect someone to make you happy. You right. have to work on yourself to make yourself happy. No one else in the world is going to make you happy. The only person is going to make you feel happy is you. You are, you have to uh, do the inner work. I think that's where the role of spirituality comes in. And, but we are not going there in the spirituality that you have to work on yourself and to, to know what you want and then take care of your own needs. Do not rely on other people to do that for you. Melissa? Yes. Um, well, first of all, I would say, to, you know, that is, that is you're taking some time and you're thinking, what makes me happy? What, am, what is special about you? There, there is something special about everyone. And you could say to your, someone could say to themselves, well, look back at me and be like, no, you know, she's just talking nonsense. But you really think about it. There has to be something like what, what makes you special? I think even people who have a low self-esteem, there is a piece of a, a spark that knows they're special. You have to take that little spark and build it, build it, you know, take the time to be with your thoughts and be, well, I would like, to, when you're noticing your thoughts, you might be noticing there's a pattern. There's a pattern of things that make you feel good. You know, so you want to do things in life that make you feel good, make you feel valued, make you feel special. You have to start it first. You have to do it for yourself first. So you wouldn't be so worried about what your partner's doing when you're um, like for me personally, it's hard. Like I'm I'm always doing things that I want to do. You know, I would like to I want to be doing more things. But right now I do do the things that I want to do. You know, I do have, I don't have a problem with being alone a lot of the time and doing things I like to do. Um, so you want to develop that. And if you're dating someone who is doing that and someone isn't doing that, you're going to tell right away because they're going to be needy and clingy and they're not going to have good boundaries and you're going to, you're going to sense it. And that's a warning sign. When you see it, you're like, well, and I don't want to fix every, like, especially if I first yeah. meet, I'm not fixing somebody. Like I'm not yeah. fixing somebody. I did my work. I want to 
be with someone who's done their work too. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's, you know, that, that's the work. I, I don't want to fix. I'm not here to fix people in a relationship. Really, you're not, mm-hmm. you're not their nurse. You're not their therapist. You know, you're there to grow together. You're, 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 you're you should be in a relationship to grow together. Or, you know, again, many are stagnant together. And if that's their choice, they could be stagnant together as well. You know? Yeah. If we can say emotionally grow up. Uh, it's not balance. It's not balance. Yeah. Yes. You are emotionally growing up. And your partner should also grow up emotionally. Uh, yes. Paul? I, I want to share a short story about... Please um, do. Love your um, story. It was, it's, it's just one of those funny little reality <laughs> stories of mine. That I, yes, I do attract certain things. I did, I did choose my, my new barber since March, April. is actually an Italian from Sicily. And I chose him when I was going through rough times with my Sicilian boyfriend at the time. He's from Palermo, of course, which is, of course, and everybody in Catania hates people from Palermo and vice versa. So, and I was talking to him and he was like, and then he, I think it was June, it was just before Mario came back from Sicily. And he said, he, it was my third time at his place. And he was start talking to me, said, ah, oh, so you're, you're entering your pension, but you're much too young for that. Yeah, you don't look like you're going on pension. And I said, well, I am. I'm 64. I'm, I'm starting my pension. And then he said, yes, but no wife, no children. I don't understand. You are a clever guy. Why are you not married? And I said, it's because I have an Italian boyfriend from mm-hmm. Sicily. <laughs> and he said, Oh, that's that's nice. <laughs> this this was due, and now I was going in in July after Mario had walked out. It was time to have a haircut at this at Vittorio's place, and uh, I and I on the way there, talking about how your mind, how our minds are powerful, and I'm I'm stating this as a fact. We have very powerful minds. Yes. Never, never forget it. On the walk downtown, I was thinking, I should talk to him about having my hair dyed. I, I desperately want to get rid of all that grey hair because I'm not exactly. I don't. It looks like a bald spot on the back, but it isn't because the hair is slightly off. I talked. Wait, let me just stop for a you, second. You told me that. No, wait, yeah. wait. All right, yeah. I like it light. I don't want it like. All right, that's. I'm a little controlling with it. No, not controlling. Mm-hmm. I, I'm funny. I tell him because I have it because I, I see him, and you really do have a young looking fit. You, you're you're you have like a boyish quality to your face. You really yeah. do. And while you're mm-hmm. speaking, but I like his hair because he he did it really dark, and I thought it was too dark. It was compared dark. to his comp- his complexion. So yeah. I like him, and and also if you feel like it's thinning. You're better off going light because you won't notice it as much. So you want the hair. You don't want it dark, and no. you can carry. You can carry light hair. You can yeah. carry. You would look. I said even copper. Like I have this thing. I, I see because I see a vision of you already in Andalusia somewhere. But now you're thinking it might be Morocco. But I already have a vision of him. I have a vision of him, and he's got more copperish hair, and your skin's like you know has more of a an olive kind of tone because you're in the sun. And you're mm-hmm. smiling, and I see that image right. of you. So that's why every time I want his hair copper, because that's how I see you, right. copper hair or blondish, but like some kind. Yes, I'm sorry. Go continue yeah. on. And th- and then on the way, I, I and then when I I closed in on, on the barber shop, I thought, oh no, I'll skip it this time. I'll just have the hair cut. And then he started working on my hair, and he was talking about because he's very impressed that my father was a barber too. So he was mm-hmm. talking, and you know the way the things were when my father was a barber and all that. So, and then he said, he said it's because he's a foreigner and he speaks with his accent, of course. And he says, "Would we be interested in coloring our hair?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I looked up and I said, "I was thinking about bringing it up on the way here, but I decided not to." And now you are asking me about this. This is strange, yep. I said. You're going to have copper hair by January. Yes, You're going to have copper hair by January. 
by November. Yes, I request. I think. Yes, I request but, from but, but, but did you, he will. You get, you get my meaning. You get yes. my meaning. Yeah. You, you, you're right, Melissa. I see. I see now your point. I, I, when I was asking who's writing this script, and you said you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm beginning to think. Whoops. You know, look out it's for fine. how you think. I was mm-hmm. thinking about getting my hair dyed, yeah. but then I decided not to mention it to the barber, and then he brings it up in this mm-hmm. sort of funny way of saying. Would we be interested in trying to dye our hair? <laughs> and I just, I couldn't believe my ears. And I, you know, you can't make this up. This is too unreal. Oh, can I give another suggestion too? Um, when you're manifesting or, or you're thinking, when you're spending time thinking about what you want to be or what you want to do, you know, when you were in your 20s, you might have had an idea of what, where you wanted to be in your life. And now you're, now you're older and you're rethinking it. So I want you to still have that passion of a 20-year-old thinking of what, what do I want to be in my life? What do I want to do? Where do I want to live? Who do I want to be around? Who do, what do I want to do with my time? So a lot of times people won't really think about those things because they'll think about why they can't. Mm-hmm. You know, and that goes back to the thought process. They're saying, well, I can't do this because I don't have the money or I can't. I, my, my family always lived here. This is where I live. Where would I go? Where would I like, so you have all those negative thoughts coming in your head. You have to get rid of that because you, you're telling the universe, this is what I want. I'm not going to worry about how I, why I can't have it or all the limitations as to why I can't have it. I'm just going to think about it. And if an opportunity comes, I'm going to take a step forward. You know, people think also when you have a dream, that means you drop everything and you just, you know, you sprint ahead. No, that's not what it always means. It no. means you might take baby steps every day towards it and be proud of yourself mm-hmm. and where you are in your life to take a step to change your life. It's a little step. Every day you can take a little step. And the first thing is that you're leaving your, we're in the age of Aquarian. So mm-hmm. you're thinking your mind, you're leaving the box open. Like, well, I want to live in the Caribbean or, um, you know, I would like to do yeah. this. Like, you know, I would like to have my own business or I would like to do, you know, whatever it is, you know, you know that, you know that. And that's the work What I would ask for people as an assignment for this week, you know, is thinking to yourself, what makes, what, what would make me happy? What, what could I be doing in my life that would make me happy? You know, you again, know, thinking uh, about it. Do you know what I've been listening to for th- over 30 years? What? From intelligent Icelandic people. Mm. What in the world are you doing here in Iceland, Pali? Mm. Why do you live here? Mm. Why don't you leave the country? You don't fit in here. Mm. I've been listening to this for 30 years, and I always, come on, I'm Icelandic. Don't be ridiculous, you know. But even if you do you don't have to think that one place either is your home. Like you, you know, you could, and that could even be limiting too. Like you might go to Spain, but you might decide you want to go somewhere else. So of course. as yes. you did not to get stuck, if you don't want to be stuck, no one's telling you, you know, so you could go back to Iceland again. You might go back, you know, the world, you know, it's limitless what you could, you know, you don't have to close that door. Maybe you're closing no. a chapter. The Iceland chapter to you is close is, uh, is more of a transition. But it doesn't mean you even have to say goodbye to Iceland. You're saying goodbye to maybe old habits or old I'm, closed ways of thinking. I'm, I'm well, leaving maybe. Reykjavik, a, but yeah, I'm buying a, a house at the Arctic Circle. Wow. <laughs> oh, that, are you kidding? In the Grimsey <laughs> Island, in, on the Arctic Circle. I, yeah. I'm, I'm buying a small house yeah. there before I leave. Oh, oh my God. That's so cool. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I love it. I love it. I love the idea. And and when I I told Floss in Sevilla, yeah, by the way, I'm buying a house in Grimsey Island on the Arctic Circle. And he said, Paul, are you drunk? No, no, I'm just telling (laughs) the truth. All right, let's skip the subject. Let's talk when you come over. You know, he couldn't couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. It's so exciting. This this is out of the, this is so out of the box. He couldn't handle it. Yeah, it just like your happiness and what you want. It 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 seems like your goals are not aligning up. Uh, what you want is a ridiculous idea, man. 
To many people right? they are, yes. Yeah. I should just settle then, down and do nothing in Spain. Now yeah. I'm heading for bigger things. I'm not yeah. settling down and doing nothing. I'm going to do something. And yeah. that's a U-turn. Yeah. It's a U-turn. It, 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 it leads us to another point that giving space your, to your partner. Uh, it, for instance, if a person needs a space, for instance, to go out, with his friends, family, uh, then it, it's a right thing to do. Uh, you are in a relationship. It doesn't mean you have to be with that person all the time. You, you, you should have a me time for yourself. It's Melissa? so important. Yes. Um, I mean, it depends. I think you can go through cycles too where sometimes you're more connected than other times. Mm -hmm. But you know you're aware if you're like you're aware of it and you're talking to the person. Well, hey, I'm in hermit. I always say it's hermit phase. I'm in hermit phase, mm -hmm. and someone who's with me will know I'm hermit phase. I'm doing inner work. You know, I need time mm -hmm. alone. And if someone else needed her, okay, you're in hermit phase. That's fine. That's fine. You know, yeah. or I'm really involved in something. I'm very passionate and I'm busy. You know, I would like to maybe be at a point where I'm sharing some things and working on some projects together because that's my alignment. And I spend a lot of time doing things I love, and I'd like to share that. So I don't over, I don't ever think in my mind, well, I want this person or I want this specific. I always say whatever is in my alignment, the universe will send me. So I, you know, cause I think it, this is, yes. because I feel like, I feel like you're almost like sabotaging yourself. If you say, oh, I want this person, I want this per, this person might not be right for your alignment. They might be a great person. They might be a terrific person, but they might not be in alignment in those puzzle pieces you need in your life. So I never man I never say, you know, I manifest a certain never, 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 never. I say I want what's best for my alignment. And my alignment is, you know, it's to make myself happy, but it's also the work I I'm here to serve. You know, make no mistake, I I'm here to serve. And I'm here to I'm here to make a, a difference in humanity. So that's where, you know, I'm sure not everybody's like People should be like that because that's actually not should, but that's part of your, if, you're, if you've done deep inner work, you're here to serve humanity in any field. It could be business. It could be, uh, it could be anything, but you're here yeah. to serve. You're not here to um, take advantage. And, you the know, only and, that's people, ethical. Yes. and the only people yeah. that can serve are the ones that have something to give. Correct. That's, that's the nice. beauty of it. That's, that's the beauty. People think that you're being like, um, underestimating yourself by serving people, but you're serving people because you have something to serve them with. Right, correct. And that is bigger than we realize on a daily basis, I think. Yes. We know that. Many of us know that we're here to serve. And mm. that's why, we're, that's why we, you've seen changes in us and mm -hmm. why we're, pro we're doing things that maybe seem out of character. We're here mm -hmm. to serve. So we're empowering ourselves and um, here to change the world. And it takes balls mm -hmm. to change the world. It takes courage to change the world. So we're mm -hmm. coming into that. You know, we're coming into that. And it's exciting. Yes. In certain ways, it's horrific and exciting at the same time. And we live in both yeah. of those places. We live yeah. in many places, yeah. to be honest. Correct. I, can't, I, I, I got a phone call from Vienna. I mean, my, my best friend in Vienna, I took him to Grimsey Island, this island on the Arctic Circle in 2013, I think. And then he phoned me up because I, his wife is on Facebook, but he isn't. And then he said, Eva told me that you bought a house on Grimsey Island. You did it for me, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. <laughs> so I'm making my friends happy with those ridiculous mm -hmm. ideas. I mean, buying yeah. a house in Grimsey Island. Mm -hmm. Who does Why that? not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, it's, who's, it's you know? new territory. It's new territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody said, why yeah. don't you buy a small flat in your old hometown yeah. and go back? Yeah. yeah. There's no go so back. The same, same routine, that. same life. Yeah. Yeah, and no. New territory. And I don't care where it is. Yeah. Fresh air. You have to make windows. yourself happy. You yeah. have to make yourself happy. And you're listen to as... your inner work. That's inner yeah. work, actually. Your intuition. Your exactly. gut feeling, what you want in life, just follow the path. And so when you when you do the inner, when you do the inner work, you get a gift. I'm sorry, I interrupted. I'm horrible. 
Um, <laughs> when you do the inner work, you get a gift. That's why I, I know I got to write it down next time so I don't interrupt. But he no, got I'm a not, gift. No problem. No problem. I'm flying uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I'm flying up north to Akureyri and then to Grimsey Island to meet the people so cool. who actually phoned me two months ago and said, you're selling your flat. Is there any chance you would like to buy our house when you leave the country and have a home in, on that island? And I said, yeah. well, I've, my ex and I, we have been looking for a house when we were together for eight years. We were always looking for something to buy and have that. Uh, but but nobody oh. was wanted to sell anything, and now you phone me up and and ask me if you I want to buy it of you, yeah. and I'm actually visiting them tomorrow morning. I'm flying up oh. north tomorrow. So cool! Oh, so this is oh, yeah. this so is like this is like a movie again. Yeah. It's like a movie. This I don't is, understand this is it. This a movie, and okay, and uh, Melissa, how do you summarize our today's topic and today's life? Okay, so your final thoughts. Your final thoughts. My final thoughts. So I guess what I'd like to I'd like to pick this up next week. Uh, maybe take it a step further. Further, but right now again, we're going back to paying attention to your thoughts because your thoughts create your reality. So what? It's almost like if you think about the food you're putting in. If you're putting um, chicken nuggets in your in your system and and French fries, you're not going to have a healthy body. You're not going to look attractive. So it's the same thing with your mind. You know, you, you, have to, you have to be conscious of what you're putting into your mind. And then you're also looking at what's telling you you can't do this or you can't do that. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that as being an impulsive person who just drops everything and takes. So you have to look at your life. You know, you don't want to, you don't, you'll get a lesson if you do something impulsively without doing the work. It's almost like you want to jump a few steps. So a lot of times you'll see a backlash if you're, if you're trying to jump too many steps at one time. So you're taking one step, at, you know, one step, you know, at a time, you okay. know, to get to where, and you're following those thoughts and you're not listening to people around you who constantly say, you can't do this or you, or you can't do that. Or you can't, you know, like you don't want to be around that, that kills your imagination. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's what that, I guess that's what I, I would say. And, and what my homework assignment would be is for people to think about in a perfect world, or let's say if, 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 even if they knew they were, they were going to die tomorrow, what do they regret not doing? You know, really think those questions to yourself and answer them yourself. You know, and what would make you happy? And think of it's that very good for next time. It's a very okay. good idea. And we'll talk, take on it uh, from there next week. And Paul, your final thoughts. This is a beautiful ending that Melissa came with because it's, it's not going to be the mistakes that we are going to regret when we die. Yes. It's going to be the things we didn't dare do. We were too afraid to do it. So we didn't open windows. We didn't open the doors. This, that's what we're going to regret, not the, our mistakes. Yes. Yeah. And, you you have uh, the chains. You have the chain. You're putting the chains on yourself. There's no one yes. doing it to you. Your life can be anything yeah. you choose to be if you're willing to work for it and do the work for it. It doesn't yeah. come easy. We're not saying it's easy because if it was easy, everybody it's would do it. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not easy. You have to work no. on yourself. And so thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Paul. Thank you. And my thank final you. thoughts are that, uh, and we discussed so many points. We started our discussion from the inner work. You have to know your goals. You have to see. You have to point out things. You have to be keen observer about your thoughts. What are you thinking? You don't have to judge it. Just pay attention on it. What are you thinking? When you start doing it, then you will see the pattern. Uh, and pattern would make you realize that uh, you have to accept the reality as it is. Then you have to follow the follow your intuition and yeah and about uh, sharing little things with your partner and making reasonable compromises and maybe the thing we discussed and and we'll we'll take on discussion from there next week and okay thank you melissa thank you thank you all thank, uh, thank you. you other people thank you adam thank you adam thank you. thank you other people so many people for your comments and i'll uh, answer it to you as soon as i can and melissa will Answer it to you as, as, 
as soon as he can. And I'm in Facebook answer. jail. Yeah. Oh, oh. So I'm answer. in Facebook. Oh, yeah. I'll answer. No problem. And thank you. Have a good day. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are.